asking diaspora Arabs about home. <laughs> Do you have time? <laughs> um, my name is Nadia, and I'm a Brooklyn-based artist, filmmaker, and the host of Sahdin. I use art, food, and healing spaces to redefine what it means to nourish ourselves. As a Palestinian American living in diaspora, I connect to my roots through our cuisine. There are many others like me who grew up far from our ancestral lands. You could call us third culture kids. The scents, tastes, and unique memories made in the kitchen ground us and connect us to each other. Come with me on a journey of remembrance as we explore third culture kitchens and the plant allies that bring us home. Rose, one of the great connectors and a plant that is loved all over the world. Roses were one of the first plants that humanity actively cultivated for their beauty as well as their loving, tending energy. Today, it is one of the most cherished plants in our region for its use in the kitchen as well as its many medicinal uses. To learn more about our connection with Rose, I spoke to Leila Ferrali, a storyteller, community educator, herbalist, and ancestral remembrance practitioner. I didn't decide I wanted to work with plants. Plants came and decided that I needed to work with them. We're engaging with plants all the time, but when we do it intentionally, it's like we're inside the land again. They carry all of the stories we've had with each other and with the places we're from and with the places we are now. These plants and these these like friends of ours have they they just have such visceral memories associated just when we like smell them. Mm -hmm. Just when we have them around us, you know. I also have um a little rose water tea here. <laughs> So do I. I have a rose. Well, I have a tea that's like a garden tea. It has rose. It has some sage. Oh, it has some orange blossoms. As a lot of our plants, actually, lots of my garden plants. Rose for me is about my grandmothers, not just my immediate grandmothers, but connecting me to all the matriarchs in my lineages, Mexican and indigenous curanderas that I've had in my life. Those grandmas, they love roses too. Like I've learned about rose from all kinds of grandmas, you know. <laughs> I was born in Southern California, in the San Fernando Valley. It was the 80s, so it was the middle of the Civil War in Lebanon. So my family's originally from Lebanon. I was such a daddy's girl growing up, and my dad's family still all lived in Lebanon. But I didn't really spend a lot of time in Lebanon as a young child because of the war. My mother's family immigrated with her, but not to California. They were tending orange groves in Florida. They opened a bakery, so they were like the Arab bakery. And they kind of became the pit stop for all the Lebanese and the other Arabs who were coming in that wave of migration from war. There would be a lot of times of going to Teta's house in Florida. She had a huge garden that she was always tending. Our freezer was stocked with like kibbe teta made, fish that she fished herself, fresh mud oot bread. I remember people would be like, where are you from? And I'd be like, Lebanon. And they'd be like, Libya? Where are you from? Like what? That place is a place that exists? Right after the civil war ended and the airport started reopening, I went back with my dad. My dad tells me in that one trip, the second I got to the village, he said, you immediately told me, when are we going to Jiddo's grave? Like I'd never met my Jiddo. He died before my parents were even married. <laughs> there was always a part of me that wanted the stories, that was looking for that connection, that was seeking context, you know, and roots. As I left the nest, I was just doing more active self-educating. Having space to just be your own expression of yourself is pretty amazing. In college, I started going more to Lebanon on my own. I started to develop my own relationship with Lebanon. It kind of naturally transitioned into me wanting to go deeper and deeper. Activist work means you're engaging with the political pain and suffering of our region and of our people. And I just felt like it kept making me want to go into like, well, how do we heal these things? Both my grandmother from my mother's side and my grandmother from my father's side were born to women named Rose or Warde. My teta, the one in Florida, she loved roses. 
like she loved roses. While most of the plants that we loved were plants that we were constantly consuming, it wasn't like we were constantly consuming rose. It was just a plant that she loved, that she always had in her garden, that she always felt close to. It was about its presence. It was just about Rose being a part of us. Even though like a, Rose is a medicine that I work with a lot. It's like one of my number one go-tos for so many things. But you know, Moetid in our culture is also not a plant like we reach for every day. Like it's special, it's special right? I had a, a grandmother here, um, an Armenian Syrian grandmother that has uh, Wadjure, the Damascus rose at her house. My mom was like, oh, Lucine wanted me to gift you this rose. So she sent me a rose from her garden, like a, a bush, which is my rose bush that I have. And I went to see my teta and I said, teta, you know, like somebody gave me a jure rose. Yani, and I have it in the, my garden. And she was like, oh. and I was like, I'm gonna bring you one. I'm gonna bring you one, you know, when it's big enough. She said, please, yes, it's in. I want you to plant a jure rose in my garden. Even if I'm dead, even if I die before you can plant it. Even if this house doesn't belong to us anymore, someone else lives here. I want you to have a jure rose in this garden so that everyone will know and so that you'll know that your teta lived here and she loved roses. And I feel like rose kind of holds me like that. Like it's energetically um, and medicinally, it's just like good for everything, but it, it holds, it, it blesses. It's so like endless, like our tetas and all the food they put on our tables and the clothes they sew for us, all the like endless things they do to just tend life. Roses are actually really resilient. Wild roses and even like our old roses, they're very resilient. They will live. They will live in conditions that don't always have what they would like the most. And like when I go to the cedar forest, for example, in Lebanon, like the cedars and roses are homies. They like hang out, you know, like you'll just see them dancing and glowing under the huge, huge cedar trees. And you're like, oh my God, you guys are, you guys have a thing, you know, you belong together. People who know me will tell you that like drinking rose and maramiye together is like my tried and true. I love shrabidwar, the um, like the syrup that people drink as juice, which actually I have some in here a little bit. So I like rose and pomegranate together. Its capacity for intimacy comes from layers. It comes from the, the dimensions and the layers. We invested in the relationship in a particular way. We co-created, we've been co-creating. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum and welcome to our kitchen. Today, we are with our dear friend, the Rose. I had such a beautiful conversation with Leila about how we love Rose and we connect with Rose. It is such a deeply supportive and calming and cooling medicine and plant. If you're able to get your hands on some culinary grade roses, you can use those in your cooking. But if not, many of us will use rose water. Very, very common household ingredient. It's also great as a toner for your face. I always carry around a little bottle of rose water and spray my face to just refresh myself any time of the day. It's one of my favorite things. And honestly, just one of my deepest allies. Today, I would love to show you one thing you can do with rose water that will have infinite applications, and that's making rose syrup. So this is a rose syrup that I made yesterday and it is completely cooled now and it's ready to use anywhere we wish. Let us take a moment to go back to yesterday where I show you how I made this rose syrup with honey, no less. To make any type of simple syrup, you wanna use roughly a one-to-one -one ratio of water to sweetener. So you can do this with regular sugar, but I would really like to use honey. So we're gonna do that instead. So we're going to put about a cup of water and a cup of honey in a saucepan together and bring them to a boil. I'm gonna go honey first, and I'm just estimating here. Woo! Medium low, about a cup of this gorgeous raw honey. You know, I love to use honey. It's nice to use a natural sugar. And then about a cup of hot water. Stir them to combine. 
And we're gonna just bring this to a boil until they're all combined together and it will reduce down into this beautiful syrup. And you can really, if you're making this kind of a simple syrup, you can flavor it with anything really at this point if you wanted to. But you could add orange blossom water if you were working with that. Now we don't wanna add the rose water until this is fully dissolved and combined and simmered down a little bit because we're not trying to cook the rose water. We're just using it to flavor and bring the energy of rose into the syrup. But this is the rose water I use. This is also the rose water that I use to spray my face, straight up. I pour this in my little spray bottle and it's fantastic. This rose water is very, very strong. So you really don't need a lot to go a long way. So I'm gonna put a tablespoon and a little bit in here. Wow, that smells so good. You know, I love honey and rose together. Great combination. Let's put this in a vessel so that it can cool down and we can pour it onto our many treats. Once we have our rose syrup, we can put it in and on so many different things. So I'm just gonna show you a few. For example, what is very commonly done is we'll make a cake, we'll put holes in the top of it and then pour the syrup on top so that cake soaks up all of that delicious rose flavor and syrup. And oh, it's just, it's so decadent. So that's what we've done with this cake here. A treat, a delightful treat. Another way that you could use this rose syrup is you could put it on top of your cereal or your granola in the morning as your source of sugar. Very, very highly recommend that. Having a little bit of rose taste in your granola, oh my gosh, so good. Putting rose syrup in or on anything is just going to elevate it. It's going to add this beautiful floral note and this, this comforting hug of familiarity. There's something very loving familiar about Rose to all of us, no matter where we're from. What I'm most excited about trying is the drink that Layla described. One of her favorite drinks, which is pomegranate juice with rose syrup. So I have everything to make that today and I'm going to try it and make it for the first time. It's very, very simple. So I have my glass. I'm going to put some ice in it first. It's a cool summer day. We're hanging out in the garden. We're surrounded by the cedar trees. Then we are going to go in with our rose syrup and put as much as you like depending on how sweet you want it to be. You know how sweet your syrup turned out. So I'm going to put about a tablespoon of this and this is a treat cocktail. Lovely. And then we just top it off with pomegranate juice, which is, I mean, it up. And I love to top things off with a sprig of fresh mint. Give this bank. Put it right on the side so that you can smell that while you drink. So here we go. How is it? This is gonna be a new summer drink of mine. This is delightful. Oof, I never thought of combining these two things. Thank you, Layla. Share with us, what are the things you would put your rose syrup on? And what are the unique and creative ways that you bring rose and rose water into your life? It's so special to connect over not just our common recipes that we all know and love, but the things that we create from the spaces that we occupy and the places in the world that we call home because we can all ground down in the home that is this plant, this familiar and loving plant. Thank you so much for joining us today and coming on this journey with us. Al, al, al and I will see you.